The Sports Scouting Report podcast with Lieber Keen is sponsored by Medine's Collision Center in Baton Rouge. Take control, choose Medine's. Grosavon Lodge, south of Lake Charles, the true sportsman's paradise. Treads and Care Tire Company in Central, the tires you need, the service you want. Harvey Autos in Shreveport, Bossier City, the name you have trusted for years. Engage in Baton Rouge. Get better connected with Gage. Welcome to the Sports Scouting Report Podcast with Lee Brickeen. Hi, everyone. I'm Lee Brickeen, your host, uh, hosting the, the show's called the Sports Scouting Report with Lee Brickeen. And today's show is going to be incredible if you like recruiting. Uh, it's going to be about the top running backs in Louisiana and also our Bayou list, which is all the top recruits in the state that I saw play. It's not every D1 player, but it's the top players that I saw play. Not, you know, an all-state team, not an all-district team. There's no stars. It's not in any order. So everybody understands it's everybody's on the team. We'll name our player of the year in today's show. We also have a great guest, Justin Smith, and his son, Peyton Park Smith from Sterlington. A big-time offensive tackle or guard, six foot five, 291 pounds. We're happy to have him all the way from Sterlington, Louisiana. And we're going to have more of the show. When we come back, we're going to have Justin Smith join us. Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it in to Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They're paying big bucks for all trades right now. They'll cut you a check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. If you need a paint job or repairs to your vehicle, go see Medine's Collision Center located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana on Kincaid Avenue. The number to call is 357 357- 7983. That's 357 7983. Your Baton Rouge Accident Advisors. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I'm your host, Lee Burkeen. Uh, really excited about recruiting shows. I love recruiting. Uh, I've been doing it since 1991. And since my dad was a coach in the 70s, uh, he was a youth league coach and I was his ball boy. I think I was like two foot tall, uh, carrying all the footballs in the bag. And I know our guest today knows everything about football because not only is he a father of a kid who's a D1 recruit, who's with us, his son is a big-time player, 6'5", 291 pounds. Peyton Park Smith, it's a name you're going to have to remember after today's show, but Justin Smith is from Australia originally, uh, and, and uh, we want to talk about that. But speaking of footballs and me carrying around the footballs for my dad, you yeah. played a little football in your home country of Australia, Justin. Yeah, I played a little bit of rugby league back home, um, NRO, which is equivalent to the NFL here. And, you know, it was, um, it was a great time back there, a little bit of fun. You did it from 95 to 2008. I mean, that was a long time. You were pretty good. Yeah, it was. You can't be a slouchy playing that long. No, you have to be fit. You got to be, um, got to know how to do defense and offense, play different positions, um, Playing the hot, playing the cold, same as these athletes right here nowadays. And so it was a really great time. Thanks for coming down to Baton Rouge, I bringing your son. It. I appreciate it. Um, and like I said, that's it's his time to shine. Now you, like I said, played from '95 to 2008. You Americans don't know the rugby sport as much, and I want to have you a chance to you can be able to, you know, yep. teach them some stuff. But you were told me you were a utility player. Was your Basically, your position in rugby. Yeah, it's like the athlete, I think, that y'all call it now in the, the teams over here. Um, I played anywhere from, say, a linebacker to a quarterback to a safety. And sometimes I actually did go into the, the line being in the front row. <clears throat> now, it's a ball. It's a ball. It's about yay big. And it's a lot lighter than a football. Okay. But not as pointy. It's a little bit rounder and a lot better surface area to hit, to kick, and you gotta be able to do pass, um, hold the ball, kick the ball, place kick the ball. You know, it's, um, I just like the sport because it's beneficial for every part of your game. Come on. Like I said, because 
if you're a safety, you don't get the opportunity to do this to say a fair catch. Yeah, yeah. You have to, um, if you're sitting there catching it, yeah. I got a chance to jump up over your head, get that ball, and keep running. <laughs> God. Well, if you go like this and catch it, and I'm the defender, mm-hmm. I'm gonna, <clears throat> I'm gonna lay, the, say, um, lay the wood on you. Lay the wood. It's and very physical. It is, and that's what uh, it used to be a small man's position back then, but now uh, it's a big man's position. What do they do if you're physical with the opponent? Like compared to football, you get a flag here in the states. What do they do if you, you know, um, accidentally break someone's jaw in rugby? Well, back, accidentally. Accidentally. Back in the day, you wouldn't do, you wouldn't get anything apart from if it Nothing? was blatant. If it was blatant, you may get suspended. Um, now, if you're hitting, because the rules have changed, HIA and everything, if you hit above here, um, say above your chest, up, you'll get, uh, yellow card, which is 10 minutes in the bin. God. And if it's deliberate or you, if you get up and, you know, throw a punch or anything, mm-hmm. you're out of here. How many so, guys uh, like to know they can get away with a lot of that stuff, the, the aggressiveness? I mean, you've got to be tough to play rugby. It's a different mindset. Yeah. I'll say, it's, um, you know, I want to eat your, I want to eat my lunch, I want to take your lunch too. That's the mindset in it. And you said there's two 40-minute halves? Two 40-minute halves, like a 15-minute break at halftime. You play offense and defense. You have 13 guys on the field. This is rugby league, not rugby. Rugby is 15 guys. And then in part of that, it's, um, what I'll say, you only have stoppage of play for injury or if you're having a scrum, okay. stuff like that. It's, it's nothing, and everything is you're possible backwards, not forwards. Backwards. Backwards. If it goes forward, it's called a forward pass, and it's a turnover. That's tough. to that, That's made my brain. And you throw with two hands, not one. Two hands. Yeah, you throw like this, not like this. And then don't this. they kick sideways? They, they, kick, can, uh, they will kick banana kick, chip kick, bomb, spiral. Is that why they have so many good punters in the States? Yes, we do. Because uh, they're running from people, kick, punt, and ball. From, you, got, you think you got all them people coming at you, and you got to pick a spot to kick it to, and then you got the safety at the back and the wide receiver. What do you think all those Australian punters in the United States taking over the punting game? I love it. It's a, tons of them. Like, every college has one. I though. love it. It's, and Australia's got to be loving that, huh? They are. They're, and that's what I mean. Some of these kids are, that are not, um, don't have the ability to play in the AFL or if they're a really good kicker, they can get a job over here. If they get a job over here or get a scholarship, awesome. You know, they've got more opportunities. One of the greatest punters to ever play in Louisiana was Brad Wing from Australia. I know Brad Wing. Yeah. You know Brad? He's, he was a top, top person. I, I still laugh the day where he got called for sports and like conduct. I think he's in back in zone. Australia now. I think he's back uh, in, in Australia with his family, I think. Okay. Uh, but he's, he, he was like out of a ball machine. He's the only one I've ever seen do that, where it came out straight up, and you could eat a sandwich before it fell down. Yep. I mean, it was incredible what he did. He played a little bit in the NFL. Yeah, he played, I know, last time we said it was with the Steelers. Steelers, yeah, yeah. you keep up with it. Mm-hmm. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about Justin Smith's son, um, the reason that we're here to talk about Sterlington High School. They won a state championship, by the way. Not bad, and he's six foot five, two hundred ninety-one pounds, and yeah. we're going to be able to uh, talk about it. We're going to meet him later in the show. We'll be right back. Be sure to take your car and truck for all your tire needs to Treads and Care Tire Company, located in Central. The number to call is three three one eight one four four. Family owned and operated since nineteen seventy one. That's Treads and Care Tire Company. Grosavon Lodge, the true sportsman's paradise. Grosavon Lodge has fresh and saltwater fishing, alligator hunting, waterfowl hunting, and echo tours. Located south of Lake Charles, Louisiana, give them a call at 337-598-2357. That number to call again is 337-598-2357 and have the time of your life. Welcome back. I'm Lee Burkeen, your host. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the show. I'm glad Justin Smith came down later in the show. Peyton Park Smith is going to be coming on, his son, who's a senior, class of 222. And we'll talk about his recruiting. He's one of the top offensive linemen in the state of Louisiana. Sterlington High School, state champions. 
Uh, Justin, what was that like for you to be at the Dome to watch the state title when that clock ended and they win the state championship for Sterlington? Your son's on the team. You got to be a proud papa. Oh, man, it was an awesome feeling. Um, it was an awesome game. But just the way he played and the boys played around him, they were they never faltered, if you get what I mean. Like, even though they were behind, they never had a sense of we were going to lose a game. That's just the way it came across. They were just that much intent. They always had each other's back. How emotional were you that, that day? Oh, man, it nearly brought me – I got Had close. To hide some I got prize. close. Yeah, I yeah. got close. It was um, you know, that's he was there for freshman year, and they got beat, and then you know, three years later, they got mm -hmm. there and they went fifteen and zero, which is they can't be broken. Yeah, they can be equal, but it can't be broken. What's your thoughts as a parent, as a dad, with this whole recruiting and the portal? What is your two cents? What is your take on it as a dad, with these um, kids transferring all over the United States? You know, it's. Honestly, this is a business right now, yeah. and but I think this portal for a lot of these high schoolers is, is going to hurt them, and it's going to hurt. Um, the, I'm pretty sure it's going to hurt football down the track because some of these kids are not going to play again. Yeah. And then in four years, five years' time, you don't have the same recruiting class as you did beforehand. Right. You got to reload every year. Yeah. You don't exactly. sign too many portal guys. No. And there's not a Joe Burrow every signee. No. And it's right Baker now, it's Mayfield. like a lot of these, it seems like people are going to try and buy a team. You know, like sign yeah. a team, not buy a team. Right. And, you know, and where's the chemistry going to come from? Exactly. Exactly. You that, don't have a Joe Burrow and right. Chase. You know, Baker Chase. Mayfield or yes. Jalen Hurts or whoever. There's not, no. not a lot of those guys no. in the portal. And when you have a team that's going for the bad times together, and they go for the good times, it makes that bond. Yeah. You know, that bond yeah. is like concrete. It won't break on now, you, now, you told me you grew up five hours west of Sydney, Australia. I grew small up. Small town of 3,000, right? Yeah, I grew up from a small town of 3,000. Um, I moved to Sydney when I was 16. I'm oh, sorry, 16 turning 17. I uh, signed a contract, left school, 10th grade. Um, to go play ball, to go do what I wanted to do, yeah. go, you know, go play in a um, Friday night football, all that kind of stuff. Uh, before we get to your son, Peyton Park Smith, uh, we're going to ask you some more questions about your son. But, you know, growing up, um, coming to the States, how often did people ask you, you probably get tired of this, do you know Crocodile Dundee or something like that? Uh, you probably get tired of that, right? They uh, so they. That yeah, was the movie that I think ever started I'll, all the. This is some some of the, they asked what kind of beer you drink, and I <laughs> said Fosters, and I said no. <laughs> no. That's probably the least one. <laughs> That's the Hollywood one. Yeah, huh? but um, it was. Oh, do you all have roads over there? I had one person ask me, do we listen to the same music? <laughs> and do you all, um, I, I used to tell them just to be, no, we ride around on the back of kangaroos. <laughs> on the back of yeah, kangaroos. back of kangaroos. And just to have have a laugh and then after the... Well, like you said, where you were raised, you told me there were no crocs where you were raised. So it's not like crocs no, are everywhere in the country. No, crocs are always up north. Okay, yeah, up people north. think it's the whole country. No, yeah. like Western Australia, Northern Territory, and Queensland, North Queensland. Yeah. And, but it's not everywhere because if once you get start moving down south, it gets colder. Not yeah. like here where it's hotter. <laughs> yeah, that's like Louisiana. Certain parts you're gonna see more alligators. Yes. And then certain parts you're not gonna see any. You know, uh, you're six three. Mm -hmm. Played rugby, rugby league, and then your son is right at six five. Yeah. Two ninety one. Yes, sir. Put together, good weight. Good. Gets weight. it from dad. Dad's got the height, so he's got you by. Both, he's, got me, he's got me. He's got tall grandparents too. Like he's um, great, his grandfather and great grandfather were six three. One was six six. So he's um, like I said, he's very. He's got the height. He's got the weight, and he's got the um, the aggression. And he would possibly, if ULM offered him a full scholarship, possibly stay home. If he that would, was that. but that's up to him. Like yeah, this where is he wants his, to go. This is his, be good for them to, to come would, across for one. Yeah, but this is up to him. Um, it's his choice where he wants to go, and <laughs> we will back him 100%. Uh, tell everybody, everybody's interested to know, how did you get to Louisiana? And you told me you first moved to Shreveport. 
Well, we, um, um, let's say, I retired over there. Your report for a while. I retired over there from in Australia, and we moved to Stonington first. We were there for one year. Peyton started doing his, went to kindergarten. Then we moved across to Shreveport to um, more opportunities, and it was a little bit bigger there. Yeah. yeah. Stonington weren't as, let's say, um, weren't where they are now. Yeah, they it's grown a lot. Yeah, it's grown a, a hell of a, a lot. lot. Yeah. Yeah, especially the new schools. And all you that see the roster, it's over 100. Easy. Yeah, the roster's over 100, and they've got some, um, and it keeps growing. The middle school, even the middle school, there's, we've got over 100 kids in the middle schools. And system. I, I got to promote your animals. You yeah. have a pet possum. We got a pet possum. We got a bunch of cats. A bunch of cats. We got six cats, and we got two dogs. And they all get along. Everyone gets along. And you said the possum even eats out of the bowl with the cat? The, yeah. I've never the, seen that before. The possum and the cats, they will eat together. But I got a little kitten, and he will slap the snot out of her. <laughs> <laughs> That's my territory. Yeah. Huh? yeah, he would just sit there, bump, 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 until she moves, and then he'll, but she just sits there and takes it. You need to make a video of that and have that on one of the, was it, I don't know, Animal Follies or whatever, have send that in to somebody. That's not, that's not, every day you see a possum eating out of a bowl with a cat. No, she, and that's why I just, I said she's um, very content. That's a very content animal. Well, appreciate you coming down from Sterlington. Uh, we're going to introduce your son in the next segment. Okay. And with the bright lights and talk to him about his recruiting and, and, and get to know your son, uh, Peyton Park Smith. But I appreciate you coming on and uh, look forward to promoting uh, your son throughout this process. And uh, later in the show, we have our Bayou team, which uh, Peyton is on. And also, we got a sleeper uh, team for running backs. And we're going to name our player of the year, the player of the year for Louisiana. Uh, and he's a lineman. I think uh, Justin will like that. Yeah, I will. Mostly like skill guys get the player of the year. Yeah, the big guys don't get no love. But without the big guys, you don't win football games. No. And probably if, rugby, too. You ain't got the big physical if guys. If you don't have, as I call them, if you don't have the pigs in there, you don't it's win. It's not going to happen. Mm -mm. Not gonna ha We're going to be right back. You're watching the Sports Scouting Report. Gage has served Louisiana for over 40 years. Let Gage create a custom tailored solution for your business and become your partner in technology. Give them a call today at 225-753-4243 and help your business get better connected with Gage. Looking for a used car? Harvey Autos has three dealerships, which means three times the used vehicles. They've got everything from fuel-efficient compacts to luxury models, even hybrids, and certified pre-owned with a warranty. Check out John Harvey Toyota, Harvey Subaru, or Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City. Welcome back. I'm Lee Burkeen, your host of the Sports Scouting Report. I hope everybody's enjoying the show. I thought Mr. Justin Smith did a great job. His son is with us now, uh, all the way from Sterlington High School, Peyton Park Smith. Love the name. Love the name. Peyton, thanks for joining us, man. Good to be here. State champions. Yes, sir. What's it feel like to be a state champion? It feels pretty good. We worked hard this offseason uh, to get here. We, we, wanted, we knew we wanted to be here. If we didn't make it, then this season wasn't worth it. What's it like growing up around all those animals in nature? That's fun, man. I'm an outdoor guy. You yeah, know? it's fun. It's fun being there like now spiders. I don't like being around spiders. You don't like spiders? Uh -uh. They just creep you out in general? Yeah. And you're six foot five, two ninety one. The spider's like a decimal, know. like the that still it doesn't. Just, just, it's not fun. Spiders, huh? Yes, sir. What's worse, snakes or spiders? Spiders. What? Snakes get me. If I see a snake, I'm run. I'm I'm jumping on. I'm finding vertical jump like when your dad had it ten years ago in Robbie. I'm jumping on the roof. But um, six five, two ninety one. You carry your weight well. Your dad's 6'3". What have you learned from your dad all those years growing up with his rugby background? Did you, did you study that like growing up? Like, oh, my uh, dad played rugby. When uh, we first moved to Shreveport, he played for their rugby team. He'd take me and my little brother there to watch and just have fun. But, yeah, you could see that it's just working hard, and you work hard, you'll get what you want. Is that where you get your toughness from when you're mauling people as a lineman? I guess. You know, because you got a little bit of that uh, intensity that you can't coach. You know, I call you a mauler. A mauler's a good thing. Yes, sir. Because you go straight ahead and you're just mauling people. Some guys, is just kind of like dance and, you know, 
they're not blocking or mm -hmm. whatever. But you're looking for people to like take down like a lawnmower. Yeah, so that's like what my O line coach and head coach just taught us. If you if you get your one dude and put him on the ground, go find another dude. Or if you miss your dude, you might as well just go pick up another guy. Take him down and help him up, huh? Mm -hmm. And then he looks at you like, man, this guy keeps knocking me down. Um, when did you really become an O-lineman in your mind? How old were you when you felt like, I'm going to be an O-lineman? Well, I've been playing O-line since I was about fourth and fifth grade. Okay. So, Long time. Yes, sir. You play tackle. You play guard. You can play even center, I think, in college because you move well. And very smart kid. Um, talk about recruiting. You were, you've, you're talking to Northwestern State in, uh, Na in Natchitoches, um, offered by Arkansas Monticello. Uh, Delta State's offered you. Louisiana College has yes, offered sir. you. And you're still like a lot of kids looking to see what else will come in. I think you're D1 all day long, but this portal thing and then signing day is going to prolong for three months. What do you like about the school so far that I've mentioned out of Monticello? Delta State in Mississippi, and then Northwestern State, I think you're still maybe getting over there for mm -hmm. a visit soon yes, in Natchitoches. Uh, Monticello, I like their coaches and all that. They know what they're trying to build there, and that's what I like. Coach Jackson. Yeah, hey, Co Coach Jackson's really nice, and he knows what he's doing. He, he tries to – he wants all the players to be like a family and build that. He's a good guy. And yeah. at Delta, they have a good program going on. They have some good facilities. We went there and tour, uh, had a visit, and I liked it a lot. And uh, their O-line coach, he's pretty good. Who he's, are you talking to at Northwestern State? Uh, I'll, right, I've been talking to their new assistant O-line coach, Coach Cox, and he's okay. been uh, texting me and trying to see if I can go on a visit. And with uh, McNeese, I've been talking to the new O-line coach, Coach Allgood. Ryan Allgood. Yes, sir. I talked to Ryan last week. Yeah, Ryan just came in. He's from Oklahoma. Valdosta. Valdosta State. Yeah, he came in with the uh, new head coach. So you, you like Coach Allgood, huh? So yeah, so you got all those Southland Conference teams. And coming on the show today, I wanted to introduce you to all these big D1 SEC, Big 12 teams. Do you have a school, Peyton, if you could say a big school that you would love for them to call you if, if, if that would happen? Is there one that you go, like oh, man, that dream would make school? Yeah. I told my dad about this, like, University of Florida, that'd be, like, just right away. Just, you love Florida? Is it the like uniforms? The, the, I like the university. I just like that area because it's, it's good swamp. weather all year round. And well, all they're that. the Gators, so. No Crocs, but they're Gators. Now, what yes, about sir. the Tigers of LSU, Baton Rouge? I really just, if any big school called me and they showed interest in me, it'd just be like, yeah, I'd go there because, like, if they're showing interest in me, that means I know that they'd want me there yeah. and all that. That's good. You say Florida. I wouldn't have guessed that. So you, just as a kid, you liked them? Just like watching their game and everything? Mm -hmm. They've had some good players. I mean, Kyle Trask recently, and, you know, they've had uh, some great quarterbacks. And then, you know, what, Tim Tebow? Mm -hmm. You were probably old enough to know Tim Tebow coming up. Um, uh, I knew Tim Tebow when I was, like, my favorite enough team, Denver Broncos, so when he was quarterback. Ah, there. okay. Okay. You like Denver? Mile High Stadium. We're going to take a break when we come back. That's good stuff, Justin. When we come back, we're going to have more with Peyton Park Smith. And I'm calling Peyton Justin, your dad. Yes. But Peyton Park Smith, we'll be right back. If you need a paint job or repairs to your vehicle, you've got to go to Medine's Collision Center located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana on Kincaid Avenue. The number to call is 357 7983. That's 357 7983, family owned since the 1960s. Be sure to take your car and truck for all your tire needs to Treads and Care Tire Company located in Central. Call 331 8144. Family owned and operated since 1971. That's 331 8144. Welcome back. You're watching the Sports Scouting Report. I'm Lee Burkeen, your host. We've got more with Peyton Parks Smith. I called him Justin, your dad. Y'all are family, man. Yes, sir. Um, you are a bowler. I don't know many linemen that bowl. Yeah, I go for uh, my friends. If we have nothing else better to do on a Friday or Saturday, we'll go see if everyone can go bowling. Just have fun. I guess you can call that hand-feet coordination. I guess right? so. You can't put the ball in the, in the gutter, right? Mm -mm. And that's easy to do. If you spin it wrong, right? Yes, sir. So what are you trying to get down with bowling the most? The spin? No, uh, that's or the, the curve, curve ball. The curve? 
and you want to give some kudos to the best bowler in your group? Yeah, it's my, probably my friend Jay. He, he's he's really a, good at pretty it. good. Yes, sir. Y'all always trailing him, trying to beat him mm -hmm. in bowling. How many strikes you get usually? I probably get about two or three. It's not bad. It's always that pin in the middle on, mm -hmm. the, on the corner pin you can't get. Pin in the middle or the two in the corner. I hate the one in the corner because that's hard to spin and get. Mine's the, the one where you got one in both corners. That's oh, crazy. man. How do you do that? Now spin, hit, a, bam. It's got to hit the other I one. I guess so. That's just a mood killer. So when that happens, I just try to hit one and call it a day. That's luck. I mean, let's face it. You got to hit that pin, make that pin go to the mm -hmm. right. It's amazing. Or you know, the ball spin to the right. Now, when you were growing up in Shreveport, you know a lot of kids that are graduating in this class that are good football players. Uh, Mitchell Ramsey at Bird, who's a top player. Uh, Marlon Finney at Captain Shreve. Um, Chris Thomas at Calvary Baptist. And Denham Smith at Calvary Baptist. These are all all-district kids. Jacob Lafitte at Lola Prep. And Kelvin Kenny at North DeSoto. You played ball coming up with these guys. This is an all-star group. Who are you closest to in this group, Bob? Probably out of everyone, probably uh, Braylon Finney and Jacob Lafitte because – me and Jacob, we went to St. Joseph's from, like, when I got there, he was there before me. I was with him from first grade all the way to eighth grade. Okay. And I met Braylon third grade. Then we played on the Colts fourth and fifth, and we just became buddies from These are all on. the top players in Shreveport. And Lafitte's one of the top kickers in the country. Finney's one of the top receivers in the country. Denham and Chris are big linemen. Chris is your size almost. Chris Thomas, 6'3", 290. And then you got uh, Mitchell Ramsey, the top running back in Shreveport. You keep up with all these guys? I keep up uh, with uh, mainly Braylon and Jacob, and then sometimes we'll see how Mitchell, Mitchell and them are doing. Okay. But I played against uh, Braylon and Jacob when uh, Neela played the Northwest All-Stars okay. in December. I want to mention this. I got to commend you for this, for your toughness. You played with a broken right hand almost the whole year. Yes, sir. That's toughness, man. I mean, I got to commend you. I mean, y'all don't play like easy teams. That's a tough league that Sterlington plays every week. I mean, that's some business teams there. That's some many colleges y'all go against every week yes, in, in, in the Monroe area. But how did you do it? Oh, it was second game of the year. Because you're blocking. You need a hand, right? You got one hand blocking. It was second game of the year. And, well, it was about <laughs> halftime. And right before halftime, I broke it. And I went to see our trainer. And we didn't think it was broke at first. I went another drive, and you know, she felt it. Like, yeah, it's broke. So then mom and dad took me to the hospital to get an x-ray, found out it was broke the next day. And then I took that week off with a cast, came back fourth week to play North set on, had the cast, and then you have to have this foam stuff put around it and tape it all up. So I was mainly just using that to, like, I was using my left hand to grip, and then my right hand just mainly pushed. <laughs> God. Every now and then the cast got a block. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if I want that cast if I'm a D lineman too. Uh, but, man, you gutted it out. You did it. And you went all the way through the playoffs with a broke hand and the state championship game. Yes, sir. With the playoffs started, I just have some – you know how MMA rappers wrap their hand? Yeah. I just do that, and then I put some uh, tape over that. Man, you're still getting knockdowns. And most people didn't even know it, huh, on the other teams. They didn't even know it, really. Union knew it because uh, we played them when I had the <laughs> they <guys> knew it. <laughs> Tell me about the state championship game before we go. What was it like playing in the Dome? What, what was that experience like playing in that big pro stadium? Well, it kind of hit me and some of my other teammates. Like when we got there that Saturday morning to take our pictures and we walked in, we saw the stadium seats, the roof, and then we realized how big it was. And then we realized we made it. Your, your energy's flowing? And it was great because we hadn't been back since our freshman year. It was just great having that experience again. First half of the game, we could have played better. We were just making mental mistakes, all that. And then our coaches came at halftime, told us what we needed to fix. They fixed it, and we just went on, just played tough football after run game. I got to ask you this, Peyton. Um, Y'all had the most unique running back set in the state. This, this is the only team in Louisiana that the running back's 10 yards behind the quarterback. When you block, I mean, you got to time that because that running back's not coming up for like five seconds. So you have to hold blocks longer. What's that like with the timing of your block? Because your running back is literally almost seven to ten yards behind the quarterback. Well, it's good for us because we've been doing that since forever. And I've been had learned that since my freshman year. We have some backs who are pretty fast. So it's not that long. We get our guys and you'll just see, boom, he's gone for like five yards, another five yards, and next play – 
10, 15 or a touchdown. You know what's impressive about your team, Sterlington? Y'all don't throw the ball much. It's like we know they're going to run, and y'all know you're going to run. It's like stop it. And it's like we're going to just run all over you. We'll run the ball, and then we got great receivers and John yeah. Ball and Rand yeah. Foster. So, like, Mass and Prep, they were thinking we were going to come out and probably run the ball. First play we get it. Changed it up a little bit. Straight pass, Rand Foster, touchdown, but open game. Y'all can do it, but 90% of the time it's run. Yeah, we'll probably hit you with a couple of runs, and like on third and short, you think we're going to run, probably hit it down long to Ball or Ram. And John Barr is only a junior. He's 6'4", 6'3". 6'4". 200-something pounds. He's coming back next year. Ram is a senior. He's another underrated recruit. Y'all got a lot of good players. What do you think of your senior group, big group? I think we we have 20 seniors, and I think 18 of them started. So it was just we all knew what we were doing because we've been playing the same those positions as freshman year. We lost freshman year, and we always want to be the group that brought it back. I want to ask you this. Y'all dress over 100 kids easy. About that. Team's not going down anytime soon. Because y'all got, what, 60, 70 lettermen coming back? I mean, what, what do you feel about the team coming up? They'll be all right. They're going to – we'll know how good our t the next team is next year because they're playing Western Road week one. Oh, gosh. <laughs> but I think – I think they'll they'll do good. Hey, that's a good uh, that's a good matchup to see. Good matchup, how, see where you are. And I think if our team can pull out next year against Western Road, I think that will show everyone in the state that's generally. Yeah. And just plus, the ones that don't have a lot of experience will get it in those first five mm -hmm. weeks. And y'all play a lot of guys in a game. Y'all special teams. Y'all have all kind of guys play. Y'all do lose a lot of DBs. I think y'all have like five senior DBs. Almost. We had uh, Cole Thompson, Armand Mills, Cliff Jones, but. They'll have like Maddox Bryan. Uh, they'll have two two sophomores probably start next year. Like I said, people coming back. Mm -hmm. The last thing I want to ask you: Who do you want to give a shout out to for helping you all through this way as a kid and football and your coach and anybody you want to mention, family or coaches or anything? My dad, because he's helped me show what I need to do and helped me get recruited. And for my O line coach, Coach Foster, because he's helped me like come to O-line M today, work on what I need to work on. And like during the off season last year, because we weren't such a pass heavy team, he'd have me work out and stay with me after work on pass sets for the camps. Well, I mean, I think you're a, a big time sleeper lineman um, that a lot of people are going to see this show. And I'm really glad to have you on. And I'm, wherever you decide to go, I wish you the best of luck. Thank I think you. you're going to do great, man. Now, one final question. If you had it your way, would you want to play guard, tackle, or center in college? If it was up to you. Really? It doesn't, it doesn't really, matter. It doesn't matter to me. Just wherever I get to play, I'll be happy. I think you could move the nose guard if somebody gave you a shot. What do you think of that? That'd be fun. I played some defense my sophomore year. You got good feet. And nose guards, you don't have to be rush ins. You just got to take up space, you know, a couple of guys. You can do that. You're pretty strong, huh? Yes, sir. What's your bench max right now, you think? Bench, before I broke my hand, I was probably about 285, 295. You're over three now? Uh, I'm working there. That, yeah. Because when I broke my hand, I couldn't bench for like at least five, six weeks. In college, though, you'll probably be 400 in a couple of years. Right, my clean is probably my best because I can clean about three plays, 315. 315? Yes, sir. Wow. We got like one of my teammates, Caleb Andrews, He's probably one of the strongest guys on the team. He's a stocky guy, mm -hmm. like 5'10", 9", something but like that. He plays like he's about 6'3". He squats like 600 or something, doesn't he? Well, that's good. That's why y'all are good. Y'all go up against each mm -hmm. other every day. I know him. Yeah, the Andrews kid's a really good player. He can go to a D3 school. A lot of kids on this team are going to sign. But look, Peyton, good luck to you, man. You did a good job. Thank you. Anything else you want to tell everybody that's listening or anything you want to say about college football? Mm, not really. It's just covered a lot I'll be of happy with whoever looks at me. I'll just be happy to go there. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Uh, that, and hey, look, Peyton did a great job. Uh, you know, O-linemen don't get the respect. Like Rodney Dangerfield, the comedian here, you know, they get no respect at all. But that's why I bring linemen on. Without linemen, you don't have all-state running backs, receivers, and quarterbacks. You don't win games unless you're good in the trenches. We'll be right back. Grosavon Lodge, the true sportsman's paradise. Grosavon Lodge has fresh and saltwater fishing, alligator hunting, waterfowl hunting, and echo tours located south of Lake Charles, Louisiana. Give them a call at 337-598-2357. That number to call again is 
598-2357 and have the time of your life. Gage has served Louisiana for over 40 years. Let Gage create a custom-tailored solution for your business and become your partner in technology. Give them a call today at 225-753-4243 and help your business get better connected with Gage. Hi, everyone. I'm Lee Burkeen, your host. I hope you're enjoying the show. What a great guest earlier, Peyton Park Smith, his dad, Justin Smith. Great people. Keep an eye on this young man. He's got a great future. You know, not everybody gets the five-star, and I'm not a star guy, by the way. I'm a guy, whether you can play D1, 1AA, D2, D3, or you can't, and then you just pick the levels, and I'm not, I don't ever follow that system. I follow the system, the level you can play, and he's a D1 player. Um, he's a D1 offensive guard at uh, D1 schools, I think, tackle at the 1AA level, and he's getting a lot of D2, D3 looks. Like, that's very normal. And that's what you expect for a kid 6'5", 291. In this segment, we're going to go over the Bayou list for running backs in the state. Just running backs. And then later in the show, I want to do my Bayou list for top players by position. And it's not every D1. This is not about all state teams. This is not about rankings and star systems. This is about the players that I saw play, that I scouted over the last two, three, and four years on some of these guys. And I just want people that like the diehard true information that's not recopied and watered down. This is not from websites. This is based on how I feel. And then I've been working for colleges since 91, sharing this with colleges, and I do that to this day. And we're going to have our player of the year as well. But let's go ahead and go into our Bayou list of sleeper running backs. These are the sleeper D1 guys. It's the top running back class, and I think, in the history of Louisiana for one class. And, and believe me, this is not everybody. This is not everybody that's D1 AA. These are just the guys that I think are sleeper D1 running backs. We want to go ahead and start with Omari Wiggins from Acadiana High School. Omari Wiggins is a one-year starter, about 5'10", 190 pounds, 4'5", speed, and he's powerful, and he's tough, and he's got a burst. Omari Wiggins is not getting any D1 offers right now, and he should be toward the end. And probably after signing day, it wouldn't shock me if he got one. There's also Jarvis Newton at Alexandria High School. They call Ash High School. Jarvis I watched as a junior. He was one of the main reasons they went to the state championship game in 2020. He's 5'10", 195 pounds. And you won't meet a tougher kid with a great burst and great hands. But Jarvis Newton is D1 all day long. And he's not getting the D1 offers. Another D1 back. Booker T. Washington in Shreveport, Jotavius Morse, who started at Woodlawn High School in Shreveport. I watched him at Woodlawn as a freshman, six foot 190, stud player. Just turn on the tape and watch Booker T. Washington in Shreveport. You'll agree with me if you have an eye for talent. Also, three running backs, D1 from Catholic High Baton Rouge. Three running backs. Who has three senior D1 running backs? Corey Singleton, Taylor Nicholas. Trey Benson. Check out the film on these guys. Trey Benson played slot receiver because they didn't need him at running back. That's how deep they were. That's the main reason they won the state championship, having all these D1. And they got a fourth D1 running back, Barry Remo, who's not even a junior yet. Continuing on, DeQuincy, Taji Caesar. That's right, DeQuincy around Lake Charles. One of the best running backs you'll see in the state. Not ranked. Who cares? D1, 5'10", 200 pounds. Powerful, three-year starter, 4,500 career yards in his career, over 50 touchdowns. Remember the name, Taji Caesar. Also, from Dunham High School in Baton Rouge, Kalante Wilson. Kalante missed his junior year with an injury, came back his senior year, was phenomenal. His sophomore year, he was one of the best running backs in Louisiana. He's only 5'7", but Clyde edwards Elier is 5'7", with the Kansas City Chiefs played at Catholic High Baton Rouge. This kid, Kalante Wilson, is as good as any running back in the state. He's almost 200 pounds. He doesn't have any D1 offers. And I'm going to be saying that like over and over. They don't have D1 offers and they're D1. The next running back is Helen Cox High School in New Orleans, Amori Dunbar. Six foot, 190 pounds, phenomenal player. Watch the tape. You'll see what I'm saying. Watch three full games. He's D1. Another kid from John Aird High School, Amai Cargo. 
He is one of the fastest running backs in Louisiana, runs a 4-4, 5-9, 180, phenomenal player. Another kid from Peabody High School. Arthur Lavallee had over 2,500 yards from scrimmage this year running the ball. He's 5'6", 181, unbelievable running back. Jalen Richard was the last running back to come out of Peabody. Guess what? Jalen wasn't highly recruited. He's now with the Las Vegas Raiders eight years now. The next player, running back, Braden Johnson from Ponchatoula, had one of the greatest years of any running back in the state of Louisiana. They went to the state championship game, lost to Zachary. He was one of the main reasons they made it. Six foot, 219 pounds of stone, of granite rock. He's 4540. Braden Johnson doesn't have any D1 offers. I'm going to say that a lot. Uh, the next running back from Salmon High School that I saw watching practice and games in Slidell, Louisiana. Trent Johnson, a one-year guy. The light went off his senior year. Five foot nine, 185 pounds. He will run over a truck if you tell him to, and he's got great speed, great hands. Had a lot, of, had over 14 plays, over 60 yards this year. The next running back from Scotlandville to Baton Rouge. Incredible player, Chance Williams. 5'8", 180, seen him play for four years, D1 all day long, no D1 offers. His teammate signed D1, Marlon Gunn, another running back from Scotlandville, signed with East Carolina. Marlon is six foot, 210, another stud running back. It's just, look, I'm not just pulling this out saying anybody. These are D1 guys. Another running back from Slidell High School, Taj, Taj Hoffman, 5'8", 200 pounds. He's a bowling ball with speed. Todd Hoffman is another D1 guy. No D1 offers. Uh, Southside High School, Kenneth King. Looks like Eric Dickerson, 6'3", 210. One-year guy. Great talent. No D1 offers. And he's D1 all day long. Brian Beck, U-High Baton Rouge. They had two running backs, Brian Beck and also Derek Graham. They're both over 200 pounds. They're both over six foot tall. They're both phenomenal players, and guess what? No D1 offers. Uh, the next running back from West Jefferson, there's two kids from West Jefferson High School in New Orleans, Harvey, Louisiana, that I saw play. His name is Jari Boogie Childs. His nickname is Boogie Childs. 5'10", 200 pounds, phenomenal kid, phenomenal student. Has as good of a burst as any running back you're going to see in Louisiana. His teammate, Tobias Jefferson, another D1 guy at running back, a senior. And also at West Monroe, Rashawn Pleasant, could sign with Tulane, one of the best running backs in the state, Rashawn Pleasant from West Monroe, 5'11", 191, really tough, fast kid, hits the hole, one of the best bursts in the state. And finally, for our sleeper running backs, Amani Givens from Woodlawn and Baton Rouge. Amani Givens is as good as any running back on the list, Five foot nine, 195 pounds, four-year starter, phenomenal talent, doesn't have any D1 offers. We actually have more running backs in our next segment in our Bayou top players in the state. These are the guys that I think are pro-ready. What I mean by that, it has nothing to do with all state, all district, none of that stuff. I think pro-ready, meaning they have the pro bodies, they have the pro ability, the God-gifted talent, and it's not every D1 player. It's only about 70-something out of 120 in the state. But these are guys, that are going to, we, and there's some running backs I didn't mention that are in this group. They're the best in the state. We're going to have that in our Player of the Year when we come back. So, hey, guys, just wanted to take a minute to tell you about Harvey Autos. If you need a new or used car, there's three great dealerships right here worth checking out. John Harvey Toyota. Harvey Subaru and Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City. Low prices, honest people, tell them Lee sent you. If you need a paint job or repairs to your vehicle, go see Medine's Collision Center located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana on Kincaid Avenue. The number to call is 357-7983. That's 357-7983. Your Baton Rouge Accident Advisors. Welcome back. I know I'm going fast and I'm, I'm like Speedy Gonzalez on this deal, but there's so much information. And I want to just share this with the public, you know, because how do you come up with all these names? I'll watch all these teams. 
backwards and forwards for four years. And then I have to like separate and see who can be this D1, one AA, D2. I look at it like a college and then I work with colleges and we have these kids in our magazine, but I want to promote them. These are the running backs for the Bayou list. These are the guys that are pro ready. I didn't say they were ready to go play in the pros tomorrow. I'm just talking about they have the pro stuff, in my opinion, to be NFL players one day. They're the most ready to play D1. And I'm going to start with running backs. And at the end of this, we're going to give our Player of the Year award. Just one guy that is the Player of the Year that I thought is the most pro-ready right now if you pick one guy that could play in the NFL one day in the highest draft pick. That's our Player of the Year. But let's go ahead and start with running backs. Dylan Sampson from Dutchtown High School is one of the best football players in America. He signed with Tennessee. He had almost 5,000 yards rushing, 23 carries in a game for 287 yards, four touchdowns against Washita Monroe. He had a bunch of games like that. And the most impressive thing about him, he's one of the top academic students in the school. He's going to play as a freshman at Tennessee, and all the LSU fans are going to say, why didn't LSU recruit this kid? And he's right in Baton Rouge. He's five foot nine, 190 pounds. He does things like work done. He does things you can't coach. He does things that when you hear the, the size five nine, you go, well, he's only five nine. He's different. You know what I mean? He's different. We're going to go to the next player from Astruma High School. Signed with Texas A&M. Another Baton Rouge running back. Le'Veon Moss, who is, if you can structure a running back, if you can build a running back, it's Le'Veon Moss. He's six foot tall since he was a freshman. He's been 200 pounds since he was a freshman. He's been a man among boys since he was a freshman. Astruma High School, he was the team. He carried them for three and a half, four years. He's going a and He's going to hit his upside in college. I think he'll be in the NFL one day, barring an injury. Le'Veon Moss, two Baton Rouge running backs, not staying in Baton Rouge. The third back, going to Florida. You mentioned Peyton, mentioned the Florida Gators earlier. Trevor Etienne. You remember Etienne at Clemson? This is his brother. He's better. He's better than his brother at Clemson who went in the first round to Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm telling you right now, throw away the stars, all that stuff. He's powerful. He benches about 395 pounds. He's 5'9", 215 pounds. He's like a semi-truck with sprinter feet. He's faster than his brother. He's more powerful than his brother. And he's going to play for the Florida Gators. That's three running backs in the SEC from Louisiana. Is that kind of crazy or what? And they're not going to LSU. There's another running back I want to mention. Lake Charles College Prep, Trevante Citizen, still uncommitted, still down to LSU, Florida, maybe even A&M. This is one LSU needs to get. They're losing too many great running backs in one year. You might see 10 running backs in this class go in the NFL one day. That's, you never hear of that. You hear it from California. You hear about this in Florida, in Texas, but not Louisiana. Trevante Citizen is six foot tall, 220 pounds, looks like Ali Broussard that played at LSU, who was all world but hurt his knee. Would have played 15 years, probably be in the NFL right now. But Trevante Citizen's dad was an All American at McNeese. His dad was a physical player. His dad was all world. His dad's a coach. This kid walks and talks football. LSU has to sign this kid or they're going to lose all the top backs in the state. One other kid I like, there's a couple more, Justin Doyle. Nobody knows who this guy is. I'm mentioning him today. Martin Luther King High School in New Orleans, a new school, brand new. He started at St. Aug, St. Augustine, where Tyron Matthew played, Chad Jones played, and over 400 D1 players have played. But he transferred to Martin Luther King. Get this. He's 5'11", 240 pounds. He's not a fullback. He runs a 4-5 in the 40. If you remember Jerome Bettis that played for the Steelers, remember they called him the bus? This is Jerome Bettis, part two. Justin Doyle, no D1 offers, none. No one double A offers. Unbelievable. One of the best backs I've seen in several years. And the last guy, these are not in order, it's just by the order of the school and the last name. A.J. Allen. Anthony Allen from Neville and Monroe, an incredible running back from Neville. 
He was one of the top players on their team. Incredible burst. Not a big guy, but he plays big. You know what I mean? Plays like a big guy. He's five foot 10, 195 pounds, but durable and very utility. Like Justin Smith said, he was a utility guy in rugby. AJ is a utility running back. Great hands, do it all. Those are our running backs. Guess what? AJ had 2,134 yards rushing this year and 31 touchdowns. We're going to go ahead and take a break, and when we come back, we're going to continue with the Bayou team with a different position. We'll be right back. Be sure to take your car and truck for all your tire needs to Treads and Care Tire Company located in Central. The number to call is 331-8144. Family owned and operated since 1971. That's Treads and Care Tire Company. Grosavon Lodge, the true sportsman's paradise. Grosavon Lodge has fresh and saltwater fishing, alligator hunting, waterfowl hunting, and echo tours. Located south of Lake Charles, Louisiana, give them a call at 337-598-2357. That number to call again is 337-598-2357 and have the time of your life. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I hope you're enjoying the show. If you, are you as exhausted as I am saying all these names? I wish we could spend an hour on each kid. That's how much I love it. I live for this stuff. And when this show's over, I hope some college coach says, you know what, that's a name I didn't have. That's a name I never watched. That's a kid I never saw play. I won't admit it, but we need to go recruit him. And that's what this show's about. It's about getting kids on the map. Let's just, you know, the elephant's in the room, right? Let's get everybody out there and let's just go recruit the guys you're supposed to recruit and not just rely on guys that are ranked. And some of these guys are ranked, yeah, they're all that, and then there's some that should be. And that's what this show is about today. We're going to continue on. Again, these are not all state teams. These are not all district teams. This has nothing to do with any website. This is my opinion of scouting 30 years. I've been doing this for colleges since 91, and it's telling you the best, most ready players, I think, that have NFL ability by position. And this group, this segment, wide receivers. You know, they come in different shapes and sizes. They come in slot receivers. They come in flankers and split ends. So if you're a receiver, you can play one of those three spots. Everything is four wide now, unless you're at Sterlington sometimes. They might go two wide. They don't need to go four wide at Sterlington. Um, but our first guy is Braylon Finney. Parks went to school with him as a young child. He's one of the top receivers in Shreveport. I think he's as good as Kendrick Law, who's on his team. Finney, when he catches the ball, he's smooth as butter, and you can't catch him. That's when you got wheels, when you can run those 60 yards out with a 10-yard play right at the line. You can, no one can catch him. He's six foot one, 175 pounds. He's a good student. I've met him. He's a steal. No D1 offers. I'm going to be saying that a lot today. And there's another receiver who signed with Louisiana Tech. O. Ryan James. That's all right. O apostrophe Ryan James. Ellender, which is in Homa, Louisiana, he's as good as any receiver that you're going to see listed on any sites or any list. He's a, if there was a five-star, O. Ryan is. And he's going to Louisiana Tech and Ruston. He's 6'2", 190, tough. I love tough receivers. Great hands, great routes, great student. What else are you looking for? He's got the whole package. Remember the name. He's an NFL guy. The next guy from Shreveport, from Green Oaks. You know, that's where Tredavis White played with the Buffalo Bills and LSU. Dakotas Crawford, what a great name. He signed with Nebraska. He's committed to LSU for a long time, but the coach left. And you know, usually when the receiver's coach goes to another school, the kid follows his coach. Mickey Joseph went to Nebraska. He signed with Mickey Joseph. He's a six foot two kid, 170. Runs a 4 3 40. He's legit. And when he catches the ball, you better call it a day. Don't even try to catch him. He's got that speed you just you can't teach. You can't. It's just God gifted talent. The coldest Crawford will probably start at Nebraska as a true freshman. He'll be in the NFL one day. Another kid that you're not hearing about from Hanville. He had some injuries. He didn't get the coverage probably that he should have deserved. Troy Kendrick. From Hanville, 5A football in South Louisiana, 6'2", 
185 pounds, great hands, great speed. And you know what I like about Troy? When the ball's in the air, he goes up and fights. And you need that when you're going to be a D1 guy. A guy like everybody's big, but he goes up and he wins those battles in the air. When you throw the ball in the corner in the end zone, Troy Kendrick's going to win that battle. Troy Kendrick might be the next Justin Jefferson. Remember I said that. Under the radar, guess what? No D1 offers. Qualified. The next player uh, we're going to talk about is Traylon Whaley from Livonia, a one-year guy from basketball, six foot six, 210. Phenomenal, just unbelievable talent. Hasn't reached, hasn't peaked, still getting better. And when, he's, when he catches the ball, he looks 160. He's got great speed. Traylon's been offered by, and he committed to Nickel State University in Thibodeau. And I do want to mention that Kendrick did get an offer from Colorado State, but he should be getting them from the SEC right now. Another sleeper receiver from Southern Lab High School in Baton Rouge, state champions, the Kittens, Darren Morris. I've been watching this kid for four years. Darren, 6'3", 200 pounds, phenomenal talent. He's got everything. He signed with Southern University in Baton Rouge. He will be an NFL guy in four years. I think the second best player in the state, the next receiver from St. James High School, Chaz Preston. His brother plays for Mississippi State. He was a DB. Chaz signed with Alabama, which is not a popular name in Louisiana right now. But Chaz is going to play as a freshman. He'll probably play slot like Justin Jefferson did for LSU. He reminds me of Jarvis Landry, but bigger and faster. That's how good he is. I've seen him play in person several times. Chaz Preston has hands like glue. He's physical like a Jamar Chase. He's built like a Jamar Chase, and he runs like a Justin Jefferson. That's why Saban wanted him. Huge loss for LSU. He's going to be a big-time player for Alabama. He'll be in the NFL one day. Another player going to Alabama, Aaron Anderson. There's not a better playmaker in Louisiana outside of maybe A.J. Allen of Neville. Aaron Anderson's 5'9", 190 pounds, and runs a 4'240". That's right. He's a legit 4'240", and he looks that way on the field, and he's tough. He could play rugby. He could go out there and play rugby with Justin Smith and his guys. He's that tough. He will be one of the best athletes in the country as a freshman at Alabama. It's not what people want to hear uh, that are LSU fans, but this guy returned over 20 kickoffs for touchdowns in his career for Edna Carr High School in New Orleans. Another player that we're going to mention is a signee with LSU, Landon Abietta from Mandeville High School. He's a slot receiver. When you cut the mold, when you make a slot, Landon's the slot. He's six foot 185. He's got great hands. He runs great routes. And the reason he's so highly recruited, the reason he signed with LSU was not because he was big. It's because he runs the best routes in the state, and he's got great hands. If you can catch the ball, you can run great routes, you're going to play a long time in college and maybe the NFL. The last player we're going to talk about, receivers from St. Aug, caught my eye as a junior, Javion Nicholas. He's a 4-3 guy in the 40. He's six foot 175. He is as good as anybody you'll see in the state. He's not ranked heavily. Incredible player. He's going to Davidson College, right? They're not even D1. He's going to be an All-American at Davidson. But remember the name, Javion Nicholas from St. Augustine, the Purple Knights. He's as good as any receiver in the state. Don't get caught up in the rankings. I don't even think he's a one-star, but he, you'll, you'll hear his name in the NFL one day, Javion Nichols. I hope you enjoyed this segment with receivers. We'll be back with our next position group in just a minute. Gage has served Louisiana for over 40 years. Let Gage create a custom-tailored solution for your business and become your partner in technology. Give them a call today at 225-753-4243 and help your business get better connected with Gage. Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it in to Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They're paying big bucks for all trades right now. They'll cut you a check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. Welcome back. I hope you're enjoying the show. And if you love recruiting, go get you something to drink and don't fall asleep. This is a long show with a lot of information. 
I'm probably going to make your head spin a little bit. If you don't follow recruiting, I'm probably going to teach you something. If you do follow recruiting, you're going to go, man, who is this guy? Who's that guy? And that's the whole point of the show is for colleges to say, you know what? Whether you've seen this film or not, it's going to make you go watch this film. It's going to make you call his high school coach. It's going to make you say, you know this guy? Lee knows his, what he's doing, you know, over the years or 30 years of doing it. We're, we need to go recruit this guy. This segment is tight ends and fullbacks. One segment. You know why we put tight ends with fullbacks? Because when you play college ball, you can be called an H-back or a tight end. You're the same guy. You could be lined up as a fullback in the slot or on the line. You're mainly a blocker either way. You're not getting carry as much if you're a fullback. You really got to be a team guy that says, okay, I'm just going to knock this guy down. Or I might catch five passes all year. It's not a luxury position. It's a tough man position. Let's start with tight ends. A guy, I call him tough guy, Chad Woodson. New school in New Orleans, Kenner Discovery. Remember the name Chad Woodson. He's 6'3", 230 pounds of granite marble rock, and he will put you on your behind in football. I've seen him have pancakes every game I've watched him. I've seen him blow off the ball. I've seen him catch passes 50 yards and outrun linebackers and corners. Chad Woodson is D1 all day long, and I think he should go D1. I don't think he has any D1 offers. Uh, the next kid is a quarterback at South Terrebonne in Homa, Louisiana. He's a quarterback. He's a tight end for college. He's 6'5", 235, Christian Arsenault. Remember the name. He was an athletic quarterback for the team. He runs a 4740. He's a big, strong guy. He actually looks like Ben Rossenberger, the Steelers, but his future is a tight end. I think he'd be unguardable, a guy you can't guard as a tight end because he runs so good and he's got good hands. South Terrebonne, you don't hear this name. If I'm a coach, I'm LSU and I'm saying, I'm giving you a preferred walk on as a tight end. You'll be on scholarship in a year. You're going to be the next great tight end at LSU. Another tight end, Danny Lewis. Jace will tell you, I've been talking about Danny Lewis for two years. He has a great game in the state championship game, and everybody wants him. But he's been this way for two years. I saw him two years ago, hit 6'5", lined up as a receiver at 240 pounds. He outruns cornerbacks. Danny Lewis is tough, too. And he's also been offered by Alabama and LSU. LSU is in the lead. They need to sign him. He's got a teammate at LSU who's a receiver, pretty good receiver, Butte. You might remember that name. Butte played at Westgate where he goes to high school, Danny Lewis. We're going to talk about fullbacks. Now, here are the three baddest dudes in the state. To play fullback, you got to be mean. you got to be a team guy. And, again, you might not ever get the ball. you got to block. you got to move big linemen. And these guys, to me, are pro-ready. Whoever uses a fullback in college still, you need to call these kids up. Prince Edwards from Catholic High Baton Rouge for three years. This kid's been the most dominant blocker in the state of anybody. 6'1", 225, benches 400, mean, 4'6", 40, never carries the ball. But if you want a guy put on his back, you want a knockdown block, he will take on D tackles, D ends, and linebackers. And you won't find a better, perfect form knockdown blocker than Prince. Edwards. He's D1. If you want a fullback, he was born to be that guy. I think he's LSU good. The next guy is Chris Baxter from De La Salle High School in New Orleans. 6'1", 235 pounds, super strong. You don't want to get in his way. He's that physical. He benches over 350. He's a perfect fullback. Also could play some tight end, go to the line and block. And my third guy, get this, he was a lineman. He was an O-lineman for three years at Jenna High School. All right, I watched him play as a center early on. He moved to fullback his senior year. Six foot, 255, Colin Ashley. Can run about a five flat. He's super athletic. Who else would you want playing fullback at the D1 level than a guy 255 with feet that blocks and strong? No D1 offers. Need to go offer these three kids and all these tight ends. I hope you enjoyed this segment. We're going to keep rolling it. We're going to take a break. And we're going to come back and look at the end of the show. We've got our player of the year, one guy, our player of the year for Louisiana for the Bayou team. We'll be right back.
If you need a paint job or repairs to your vehicle, go see Medine's Collision Center located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana on Kincaid Avenue. The number to call is 357-7983. That's 357-7983. Your Baton Rouge Accident Advisors. Be sure to take your car and truck for all your tire needs to Treads and Care Tire Company located in Central. Call 331-8144. Family owned and operated. It's 1971. That's 331-8144. Hi, everyone. I hope you're not exhausted watching this show. Again, just kidding. I hope you're enjoying the show. Uh, when this show's over, you're going to know about, to me, the most ready D1s. This is not every D1 in the state. So if your mom or daddy watching... It, we would have to have a 10-hour show to mention every D1 player in the state. These are the guys, I think, that are just pro-ready. They might not be pro-ready at 18 to go to the NFL tomorrow. I'm just talking about physically. If they do what they need to do, if they do what they're supposed to do when they get to college, if they keep working toward what God gave them, everybody I'm mentioning today could be an NFL player. That's the point of this list. It has nothing to do with being all state. It has nothing to do with newspaper clippings. It has nothing to do with stats. It has nothing to do with rankings. These are the top guys in the state. I think they could do whatever and be whatever they want to be with hard work at the next level. We're going to continue on with the athlete position, which there's a lot of guys that play at other positions. And if your mom's seeing this or dad, this is the position, meaning you might have played in high school, you might have played three or four positions, but you're going to be a three-position guy in college. And maybe a college doesn't even know where they're going to put you because – you're such an athlete to play many positions. Albany High School is our first guy. Nobody knows about this guy, Harley. Jeremiah Darty, 6'3", 210. He was a quarterback for Albany. Unbelievable football player. Could be a safety receiver. Could be a quarterback at a small school. He's the most gifted player I've ever seen play at Albany High School. In the history of Albany High School, he was committed to Louisiana Tech. If he still signs there, they're going to get an NFL player one day at, at wherever he grows into. He might end up being a linebacker. He runs a 4-5 in the 40. He's qualified. Remember the name, Jeremiah Darty from Albany High School, which is not far from Hammond, Louisiana, not far from Denham Springs, on the way down I-12. Continue with athletes. Captain Shreve, we talked about Braylon Finney earlier from Captain Shreve as a receiver. Kendrick Law, Jr., signed with Alabama from Captain Shreve. He could be a receiver, he can be a DB, he could be a safety, he could be a running back. He's going to Alabama. I think Saban's gonna make him a corner. I think he's gonna make him a corner. He's six foot 190. Get this, in track he ran a 10, 300 meters. Can't teach that. You can't coach that. And he's tough. And they didn't have to use him a lot because they had so much talent at Captain Shreve this year. And most people look at his stats and go, you know what, he didn't have a good year. He didn't have to. He's really good. Continuing on, at General Trass High School in the Monroe area, outskirts, General Trass, Lake Providence area, why Det Williams was one of the main reasons that General Trass was so good the last two years. You remember they beat Evangel Christian uh, in 220 to, to get their name out. They beat a lot of people. They almost went to the Dome two years in a row. Wydett Williams was their quarterback, but guess what? He was the best player on their team. That's what you put at quarterback. Wydett would be a receiver, a DB, a linebacker, a safety. He's a phenomenal kid, and he's D1. No D1 offers. Unbelievable no D1 offers. Wydett Williams is a kid that people need to reevaluate and give him a scholarship offer to the big level. The next kid from Huntington in Shreveport, Zion Claville, six foot three, 190 pound receiver DB, signed with Louisiana Tech. He looks the part. God gave him all the ability. He's a great talent. And they didn't even have to use him a lot because they had a lot of talent around Zion. He's gonna go to Tech and become a better player if he keeps working like all these kids. Remember the name from Huntington High School in Shreveport. The next kid, all the way around Lake Charles, Iowa, some people say Iowa, Iowa High School, Curtis DeVille, signed with Purdue. The reason he, he's going to Purdue is because he's 6'2", 3", 200 pounds, played five positions for Iowa, a hidden gem, could be a linebacker, could be a DB, could be a receiver. He is just an incredible football player. 
And hey, Purdue probably don't know where they're going to put him, but in the end of the day, he'll be a great player. Back to Martin Luther King High School, brand new school in New Orleans. Leroy Page started his career at Holy Cross, where I watched him as a freshman. 6'4", 215, 4540, and mean, and can run. Incredible talent. It wouldn't shock me if LSU offered this kid late in the process. I heard they're interested in him, but remember his name. Continuing on, St. Martinville had a great team this year. St. Martinville had a great team in 220, and they were so close to making the state championship game two years in a row. The reason is Mandrell Butler, their running back and store linebacker, is the toughest, one of the toughest players in Louisiana. 5'10", 190, ran for over 3,000 yards, had over 300 tackles, had over 100 sacks, had over five interceptions, six fumble recoveries, had eight touchdowns on offense. You name it, Swiss Army knife. Remember Mandrell Butler, I would take him if I was a coach D1 right now to play for my team. Tough. Give me tough. Give me a smart kid. Give me a tough worker. And then the last kid, everybody remembers this kid in the playoffs, Jordan Doucette, Westgate High School. Quarterback, not a quarterback. Played because that's where they needed him. They won the state championship. 5'8", 150, runs, runs a 4'3", 40. And he thinks he's 190. I love those guys. The guys that are little, that think they're big, they're usually good players. Ask Bill Belichick how big his slot receivers are. Ask the Ravens. Ask the Steelers. They're not big guys. Jordan Doucette's going to the southeastern lines in Hammond to play ball, and he's going to catch a lot of balls in space because he's a great football player and a great kid. I, I watched him for three years. We're going to take a break. I hope you enjoyed this segment. We're going to continue on with our positions. And late in the show, our last segment, we're going to name our player of the year. Grosavon Lodge, the true sportsman's paradise. Grosavon Lodge has fresh and saltwater fishing, alligator hunting, waterfowl hunting, and echo tours located south of Lake Charles, Louisiana. Give them a call at 337-598-2357. That number to call again is 337-598-2357 and have the time of your life. Gage has served Louisiana for over 40 years. Let Gage create a custom-tailored solution for your business and become your partner in technology. Give them a call today at 225-753-4243 and help your business get better connected with Gage. Welcome back. I hope you're enjoying the show. If you love recruiting, you're going to be in heaven with this show. I mean, it's not everybody, but it's the top guys that I think are NFL ready physically. Again, when they get to college, you're going to hit the next uh, stage of their development. They're going to hit a college weight room. They're going to get college coaching. They're going to get college expertise. And they're going to flourish if they just keep working hard with the God-given talent they, were, they have. We're going to, this segment is O-line. It's the bad guys. It's the guys in the trenches that doesn't get any uh, attention. It's the guys that nobody talks about, but maybe two or three a year. But I'm going to give a big list of guys that are sleepers, that I think have NFL bodies, they have NFL ability. Some are raw. Some are ready to play right now if they were 2021 in the NFL, in my opinion. But we're going to start on O-line. And I'm going to talk about a kid I've seen for four years from Opelousas High School. People don't talk about Opelousas around Lafayette. Trent Murphy, who has a 3.9 GPA. He's 6'5", 280, runs a 4'7", 40. And I've seen this kid run and, and hit people like he's a receiver. He's as good as anybody in the state. No D1 offers. I'm just trying to wrap my head around it. Trent Murphy. No, well, he's got some, but they're one double A. He does have tech. But he's a guy that every SEC school should offer, and he's a true tackle. He's a long-arm kid. He's only a tackle, which that's, he's a guy that I think will be in the NFL one day, wherever he goes. Uh, the next guy is Will Campbell from Neville. He's the most ready O-lineman right now to play in the NFL if he was an older kid, obviously. But in three years, he'll be going to the NFL. He won't play four years at LSU. He's the guy that Coach Kelly had to get. That's going to be a guard tackle. Um, he was just born with skills that are just incredibly off the planet. And he's 6'6", 310, and runs about a 4'7", 4'7", 9, and he brings it. He brings it. 
Um, he's been starting since his freshman year at Neville. They don't start freshmen at Neville. I saw him as a freshman in the playoffs at Lakeshore High School. I thought he was a senior. I was asking Bubby Brister that played in the NFL. I said, who is that 66? Who's that senior? He said, that's a freshman, Will Campbell. That was four years ago. And he looked like a senior D1 player as a freshman. The next kid is Emory Jones, who signed with LSU from Catholic High, the Bears in Baton Rouge. Emory's 6'4", 325, 330, and can, there's nobody meaner pulling than the state than Emory Jones. He's going to be another uh, cornerstone guy, another block builder for Coach Kelly that they had to have. Emory Jones is a great student. I think him and Will Campbell will play right away only because they're just different. They're a different level of O-lineman. Emory Jones could have went to any college in America like Will Campbell, and he's just God-given talent, and I think they're going to be phenomenal NFL guys in three years. The next kid, you, you met him on the show earlier. He came all the way from Sterling to Louisiana with his daddy, Justin Smith. Peyton Park Smith, 6'4 and a half, 6'5, 291, is a mauler. He's like an Emory Jones, straight ahead. He's going to get you out the way. He's going to call your name out, say, get up again. We're going to do it again. And he played with a broke hand all year long, just about, week four on. They won a state championship running behind him, state title this year. And he's got some D2, D3 movement, some 1AA movement. But I'm here to tell you, he's D1. You don't find guys 6'5", 291 that can play guard and if needed, tackle, but he'd be a great guard at the D1 level. Continuing on, on the O-line, there's a lot of good-looking players this year on the O-line. Bo Bornelaw, signed with LSU from Newman, started his high school, guess where? E.D. White in Thibodeau. I saw him as a freshman at E.D. White. He was 6'5 then, about 250. He's a late bloomer, meaning he's going to put all his weight on in college, and he carries 280 pounds like he's 220. He's going to weigh 320 and he's going to look 250. He's going to be a guard. His daddy played in the NFL with the Chargers, Ben Bornelaw. His dad was all SEC. He's got more talent than his dad. LSU, do you see what their talent level is? They're getting all the O-linemen. They need to get citizen at running back. They lost a few receivers because of the coaching change. But Bo Bornelaw is going to be one of the cornerstones to getting the program back with Will Campbell and Emory Jones. One of the best high school signing groups for LSU, for O-line in a long time. Continuing on, from Pineville High School in North Louisiana, Caden Morrow, 6'5", 285, great hands, great feet, committed to ULL and Lafayette. Uh, as a junior, was 6'5", 285, had great hands, great feet. I would offer him as a junior, but he didn't get a D1 offer until about two weeks ago from ULL and Lafayette. Cam East has as much ability as anybody in this class and I don't think he's hit his upside yet from St. Aug in New Orleans, St. Augustine, Purple Knights. He's 6'7", 320, has 2% body fat. He moves well. I think he's a guard. When you think he's 6'7", you think tackle. I think he's a guard. I've seen him play a lot. He's going to Ole Miss. And he just, once, he, once that light goes off, he's got a chance to be an NFL player. The next guy. Played D-line at De La Salle High School in New Orleans. He was a D-lineman the whole four years. Frankie Bentley, 6'5", legit, 320, and he's going to be an O-lineman, offensive guard. And guess what? Not many offers. Runs a 4'9", 5 flat 40. Tough guy. Ask you high in the playoffs. Ask anybody the last four years. Ask St. Thomas Moore High School how good this guy is. Bentley runs a 4'9", 5 flat at 325 pounds. Uh, the next kid that I want to mention, from Briarfield Academy, all the way over there in Lake Providence, out, outskirts of North Louisiana, Carter Couillard. We did his highlight tape. He, had, he didn't have anything going for him, 6'4", 265. Uh, he's got 10 or 10, 10, 11 offers now of all levels. Some D1s are coming in now. He's a 4'8", 40 guy. He played O-line, D-line, eight-man football. Eight-man football. I watched all his games. He's athletic. He runs a 4'8", 40. He's 6'4", 265. He played tight end, too. And the D1s are just now getting on to him, and, and Southeastern loves him. Tech's starting to recruit him. Good luck, because he's going to be uh, getting a lot of offers there this year. And a guy on my list 
from Carroll High School in Monroe. You don't hear of anybody from Carroll. I got a couple today I'm going to talk about, but Carroll High School, the meanest guy I saw block. He must have had 20 pancake blocks a game as a guard, Thomas Little. And you're going to say, Lee, Thomas Little's not on any list. I don't care. He's six foot 290, and he runs a 4840, and he's like starting up a motorcycle going straight. He is really tough, and he takes care of the blocks. I think he's a stud. I think he's D1. You got to you know, sometimes realize he might not have the size, but he, when you're 290, I think that's pretty good. Six foot and you're different. He's different. He's different. Watch his tape. Another kid, a center from Warren Easton, who's going to Purdue. Purdue's love in Louisiana. Malcedio Presido. I hope I didn't butcher that. Mama's probably going to want to knock me out, but Mal Malachi, I think, Presido. Uh, we'll ask Jace. We'll, we'll, if we get it wrong, we'll say it next week's show. But he's 6'3", 290, signed with um, Purdue. Great feet. He's a true center. How many true centers do you see in high school? I don't see that many. He's advanced. He's got great feet. He's a great technique guy. I think he'll start at Purdue as a freshman. Uh, and that's all of our O-line, and I hope you enjoyed that segment. Half of those guys you probably never heard of. And when we come back, we're going to continue on with our list. And again, our last segment, our player of the year. We'll be right back. Looking for a used car? Harvey Artos has three dealerships, which means three times the used vehicles. They've got everything from fuel-efficient compacts to luxury models, even hybrids, and certified pre-owned with a warranty. Check out John Harvey Toyota, Harvey Subaru, or Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City. If you need a paint job or repairs to your vehicle, go see Medine's Collision Center located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana on Kincaid Avenue. The number to call is 357-7983. That's 357-7983. Your Baton Rouge Accident Advisors. Welcome back. I hope you're enjoying the show of our Bayou teams. Uh, guys NFL ready. It has nothing again to do with all state teams or anything like that. We're going to talk about defensive ends and D-tackles and nose guards that are, I think, phenomenal players. The first guy I'm going to talk about is Walter Bob from Acadiana High School in Lafayette, committed to Alabama, decommitted. Interesting to see where uh, this kid's going to sign because he's 6'4", 260. He brings it every down. You don't see D-Lyman bring it every down. And, by the way, he runs a 4'8", I think he's an NFL guy one day. I think he's 280 one day. I think he stays at D-N at 280. That's how athletic Walter Bob is. He's very good. The next kid I want to talk about from Alexandria High School is Jamari Monette, who's 6'3", 270, 268. You won't meet a nicer kid. He's very gifted. He's very aggressive. He plays DN. I think he's maxed out on his size, which is good. He's ready to play right now at that size at DN. And he was one of the main reasons that Alexandria High School was in the state championship game in 20 and also almost, almost this year. Remember, that's a guy LSU might end up signing when you say there's no D lineman. That's not correct. He's one of them that's available. The next guy is from Bonneville High School, Josh Martin. You don't hear his name. Put in his tape, full game tape, pick any game for Bonneville. He's six foot four, 270, runs a 4'8, and he looks like an NFL defensive end. What else are you looking for? you got to remember that name, and he's not getting any D1 offers right now. Uh, and I don't know how he was second team all district, and I'm not even big on all that stuff. But he's 6'4", 270, and just special. Catholic High Baton Rouge, Wesley Woodward had 13 sacks prior to getting hurt the last four games of the year. Came back, was like Peyton, came back hurt and recovered for the state championship game in the playoffs. Ended up with like 15 or so sacks. He reminds me of a Kyle Williams that played at LSU from Ruston, played for the Buffalo Bills. Kyle's probably going to be in the Hall of Fame one day. He's now coaching at Ruston High School. Wesley Woodward has got a preferred walk on to LSU. He'll probably, he might go there, but I still, he might get a big D1 offer in the end. If he goes to LSU, he'll be on scholarship within a year starting. I really believe that. Church Point. You know how good Church Point was the last two years. Oh, they were so close to getting the state championship games. One of the main reasons was Jamarian Citizen, 
who's kin to Trevante Citizen of Lake Charles Prep, the running back. Um, Jamarian Citizen is six foot three, 245 pounds, and runs like a linebacker. He is incredibly strong and incredibly tough and plays every down. No D1 offers, got a Henderson State offer. Continuing on, Madison Prep, Quincy Wiggins, probably the best looking defensive end you'll see in America. Six foot seven, 275, 2% body fat, played basketball, became a football player. It's just learning the game the last two years, kind of like rugby and then learning American football. You need that transition. Quincy Wiggins signed with LSU, and when he hits his upside, he's going to be a first-round pick. If he keeps working, he's got that ability. He runs a 4'6'40 at 275, 6'7", and he's long, and he looks like he's 240. The next kid, Quentin Cook from New Iberia, another tall, lean, athletic DN, 6'4", 250, signed with Texas Southern. He will be an NFL guy. And you'll say, I saw it on Lee's show. Quentin Cook wasn't ranked from Texas Southern playing in the NFL one day. The next guy from Washita High School in Monroe. There's not a better looking defensive end in the city of Monroe, Philip Bradford. He went to Dallas. He moved back his senior year. He's 6'4", 260. I've seen this kid make tackles outside, running down, running backs that run 4'5". When he is dominant, he's dominant. He's built. He can run. He's strong. He's an NFL guy. Philip Bradford is still available, believe it or not. The next defensive end is Dylan Foster from Woodlawn of Shreveport. Woodlawn has had some great players over the years. Dylan Foster caught my four years ago. He's 6'4", 245, runs a 4'6". He's a pass rusher. He's grown into the position. He was 200 pounds as a freshman, and he's got NFL ability. He's still available and guess what he plays baseball too as a big guy we're going to go ahead and go to d tackles because it's an extension of the d line and there's only three guys i could come up with that had nfl ability one signed with lsu taiji hill from edna carr he's six two and a half 295 pounds and he can play nose he can play date d tackle he can even play dn at 295 pounds he's got great feet he's strong he gets off of blocks and he can take on two or three guys. That's why I think he'll be a nose guard probably. Depends on what LSU uses. He signed with LSU. Taji Hill will have to play as a freshman because they just don't have a lot of depth. Uh, the next D tackle is Marksville High School. You don't hear a lot about Marksville. Chad Lavallee came out of Marksville. That was an All-American at LSU. This guy is DeCorian Nelson. I've seen him play for five years. They have eighth graders at start at Marksville. DeCorian is... 6'3", legit, 290, runs a 5 flat, and he's mean. What else are you looking for? The last D tackle, who I think LSU lost on to Auburn, is Inca Sledge from Neville. 6'2", 310. He's the perfect nose guard and it, with feet, and he could play DN. He's so athletic, he could be a DN at 310, 6'2". Sledge is going to Auburn, and he'll be facing LSU every year. He's an NFL guy. We're going to take a break. We're going to continue on. We're almost done. We've got three positions left. We're going to talk about DBs, quarterbacks, and one other position. And then our player of the year at the end of the show. We'll be right back. Be sure to take your car and truck for all your tire needs to Treads and Care Tire Company located in Central. Call 331-8144. Family owned and operated. It's 1971. That's 331-8144. Grosavon Lodge, the true sportsman's paradise. Grosavon Lodge has fresh and saltwater fishing, alligator hunting, waterfowl hunting, and echo tours. Located south of Lake Charles, Louisiana, give them a call at 337-598-2357. That number to call again is 337-598-2357 and have the time of your life. I hope everyone's enjoying the show. Welcome back. I'm Lee Burkeen, your host. We had Justin Smith on earlier, his son from Sterlington, Justin Park Smith. What an incredible kid from Sterlington. Class of 222, 6'5", 291 in weight. We're going to continue on with our recruits, our Bayou team, linebackers. Now, this could be Mike linebackers, could be an outside linebacker, could be a buck linebacker. Buck linebacker is a stand-up guy that looks like a DN and goes back in coverage. Mike's are your middle. 
outside or your outside guys to cover the pass and run running backs down like a Patrick Queen of LSU. That's with the Ravens right now. Here's a kid I'm going to start off with in North Louisiana from Franklin Parish in Winsboro, Louisiana, Josh Kemp, six foot 230, phenomenal athlete, runs a 4'7". He looks faster on the field. He likes LSU, UCLA, Alabama. Hasn't gotten any D1 offers from California. Raised in Winsboro, Louisiana. He's as good of a Mike linebacker you're going to see in the state. I think he's D1. I think he's a pro guy. The next guy is Dennis Darty from Jesuit in New Orleans. You won't find a tougher guy. They play St. Aug every week. They play Shaw. They play Rommel. They play John Curtis. They play Brother Martin. Dennis Darty, 6'2", 235, built like a an NFL Mike linebacker, built like a Big Ten linebacker, and an incredibly physical guy, and hasn't gotten one D1 offer yet. And he runs about a 4'8", and looks like he's a 4'6 on the field. He's got a knack for the ball, and he's tough. I mean, I watched Bill Romanowski play growing up in the NFL. He looks like that. You know, he's a big guy. He's going to weigh 240 in college. What else are you looking for? The next linebacker, Connor Argeron, just committed to Nickel State. Not kin to Ed Argeron, same name, but Connor Argeron is 6'2", 215. I think he's an in-between. He's a Mike. He's an outside. He will bulk up and be a Mike. He'll play about 225. Nichols is getting a steal. This kid was the bad, one of the baddest guys, meanness-wise, in the whole Catholic League. He was a tackling machine. Connor Argeron, remember that name. The next guy from Monroe area, Oak Grove, outskirts of Monroe. Caleb Proctor, I don't know how he's not going to Louisiana Tech or ULM, but he's going to Southeastern in Hammond, Louisiana. Get this, he's six foot two, 255 pounds. That's a high school linebacker, and he looks like he's about 230. Carries his weight well, runs a 4'8". I think he's going to start for Southeastern if he continues to work hard. And can you imagine how big he's going to get once he gets in the weight room? He might be a 270-pound linebacker in the Southland Conference. I think the Lions got to be super excited. We're going to keep talking about linebackers. Caden Jones from St. Charles Catholic in Laplace, Louisiana. Six foot, 230. I've watched him play for four years. Gifted, fullback for the team, did whatever they want him to do. Team captain, 4740. Great football player. I think he's going to be a great player. Um, doesn't have a D1 offer. Has been offered by Southeastern and Nickel State. The next guy from A. Meet, Silent Mississippi State, Javar Gilmore from A. Meet, six foot four, two twenty-five. He's either going to bulk up to a DN and a buck linebacker as a rush guy, stand up, or he's going to be a linebacker and just stay at two twenty-five. He's already there, or he could be a tight end because he runs a four-six in the forty, and he can bulk up to two fifty and be a tight end. Javar is a great athlete. This Gilmore kid was a steal for Mississippi State. You're going to see him play next year for Mississippi State against LSU. The next linebacker. Now, you're going to ask me, why is this kid at linebacker, Lee? Well, because I think he's going to be a linebacker in college eventually. Jacoby Matthews from Ponchatoula. He's a safety right now if you look at the websites. I'm watching him. He's a hamburger away from being a linebacker. He's 205, 6'2". He's a great athlete. Played quarterback for three years. Only played DB one year. But I think as he moves up closer to the line, he fits the linebacker role more than he does safety. Even though everybody wants to be called a safety, they're going to move you where you belong in college. And I think he's got a chance to be a great outside linebacker. Jacoby Matthews is uncommitted. He's down to LSU in Florida. We'll see what happens on signing day. Um, and also, we're going to take a break. We breeze through that. we got the secondary left. And we're going to leave the – hey – the leaders, quarterbacks, they're the last segment, and then we're going to name our player of the year. We'll be right back. Gage has served Louisiana for over 40 years. Let Gage create a custom tailored solution for your business and become your partner in technology. Give them a call today at 225 753 4243 and help your business get better connected with Gage. So, hey, guys. Just wanted to take a minute to tell you about Harvey Autos. If you need a new or used car, there's three great dealerships right here worth checking out. John Harvey Toyota, Harvey Subaru, and Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City. Low prices, 
honest people, tell them Lee sent you. Welcome back. I hope you are enjoying the show. I hope people are learning some new names. Uh, some of these names you know about already. And I'm throwing out names to me that are as good as the names you already know. I'm just giving you, you know, because you, you know, when you ever pick up your magazines in five years from now and you see these names, you go, well, I didn't know that guy. He ended up at Howard University or Texas Southern or Southeastern or Nichols or Sanford or Texas Westland or Austin College or East Texas Baptist. Well, this is what I'm doing today. I'm telling you about those guys that are under the radar. We're going to talk about the secondary in this segment and special teams. We got one punter, one kicker. There are others. And we got our top corners. We're going to start with our secondary. Let's start with cornerbacks. Acadiana High School, LaTerrence Welch. Signed with LSU, he's legit, he's 6'1", 190, big guy. I like those big corners that plays the run. I like how he plays the run better than I like how he plays the pass. And I think LSU needs guys that can play the run. He's physical, something LSU's lacked at corner in a long time. And he can also guard the deep ball, and he's such, such a big guy. He's going to be the biggest corner on the team uh, unless they get some transfer portal older guys. But he's going to play. As a freshman, Terrence Welch, he'll be an NFL guy. Minnesota University, believe it or not, went into New Orleans at Helen Cox High School and signed Tariq Watson, who's going to play right away. He's a 4'4 guy, 5'11", 180, can do it all, return kicks, punts, played a little DB for them, played receiver, played everything with quarterback. Remember this guy, he'll be an NFL guy in three years from Minnesota. The Gophers of the Big Ten. The next guy is Lorenzo DeBose from Neville, who's a corner. I think he's going to be a safety. He's big, he's long, he's 6'2", about 185. I think he's going to be 200 pounds and be a free safety. He's a downhill guy. He's a smart kid. He's got good hands. He knows how to play the ball. He's a quarterback. Quarterbacks are your safeties if they're not playing true quarterback, and that's what DeBose is. DeBose is a steal. He signed with ULL of Lafayette. I thought he could go to LSU. He'll do well at ULL. He'll be in the NFL in three years. West Monroe had a great safety. Jadarius Richard, or Richard, however they pronounce it in West Monroe. But Jadarius is the best player on the team at West Monroe. 6'2", 200 pounds, come up and hit you. Tough kid. And he could be a linebacker. He might grow into a linebacker, or he might stay at safety. He's going to Vanderbilt in the SEC. Look for him to start next year for Vanderbilt, which needs help at DB in Nashville. What a great school. Smart kid, too. Continuing on, we're going to stay in Monroe. Carroll High School, my favorite corner that nobody's talking about or safety, Aeneas Roberts. You talk about a f special kid that no one's talked about. He's D1 all day long. He's 5'11", 190. He's a four-year starter. He's a fast guy. He's a physical guy. He knows the game. He reminds me of Tyron Matthew. You know, he's just a playmaker. He makes things happen. And he's still available. No D1 offers. Continuing on, Covington, we're talking about safeties. Ian Goodley was a big-time steal for Southeastern and Hammond. I thought he was an SEC guy, 6 foot 180. He will hit you. He will lay the lumber. He's one of the best hitters in Louisiana. Remember the name, Ian Goodley. He'll play as a freshman for Southeastern University. Continuing on, we're going to talk about special teams. And this is another position nobody talks about. Actually, Parks knows this kid. He grew up with him in Shreveport. We're going to start with our kicker first. He was a quarterback at Lola Prep. He was a punter. He was everything but the water boy. And by the way, he's a kicker that can kick 60-yard field goals. From 55 yards in, he's money. He was a great punter. He was a great quarterback. But if you need a kicker, you need a kicker, then go in tomorrow and be the guy and kick off five yards in the end zone and make long kicks. Jacob Lafitte, you got. Jacob Lafitte's a senior at Alola Prep High School in Shreveport, and he doesn't have any D1 offers. If, I'm a, if I was a special teams coordinator right now at a D1 school, I would be sleeping in a tent at Alola Prep trying to sign this kid. Our punter, the best punter in, in Louisiana since Donnie Jones, I think, from the same high school, Catholic High Baton Rouge, Kylan Dupree, who's got a lot of offers as D1 walk-ons. I'm, I'm looking for somebody D1 to offer him a scholarship because you don't see guys that can punt the ball 60 yards in the air with a hang time of almost three and a half, four seconds. And by the way, 
He kicks off six yards in the end zone every time. He could do that too, and he can punt. He can kick, and he also kicks field goals up to 60 yards. Kylan Dupree, I saw him make a 50-yard field goal with no time left his sophomore year against St. Thomas More in Lafayette to win the game. Ice in the veins, man. As a sophomore, as a 14-year-old kid, Kylan Dupree is our punter. That is almost it. we got to come back with quarterbacks. You know, the leaders of the team. i got some people that you know about, and we're going to mention some quarterbacks you don't know about when we come back. If you need a paint job or repairs to your vehicle, you've got to go to Medine's Collision Center located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana on Kincaid Avenue. The number to call is 357-7983. That's 357 357- 7983, family owned since the 1960s. Be sure to take your car and truck for all your tire needs to Treads and Care Tire Company located in Central. Call 331-8144. Family owned and operated since 1971. That's 331-8144. Hi, everyone. I hope you're enjoying the show. Tell a friend, tell a neighbor, tell a coach, tell somebody at the school. You don't know, your kid might be mentioned today. We're getting out the big names and the names that you should know about. And I hope when you finish the show, you say, you know what? Uh, whether you like Lee or not, I really love what he does. I love the information. It's to help the kids. This is all about the kids. This is about helping kids get a scholarship. This is about helping kids shape the next four to five years of their life. Whether it's D1, junior college, prep school, D2, D3. And we're going to end our show. Well, we're not going to end the show, but our last segment is quarterbacks. And then the player of the year is the final segment. Our first quarterback from Jesuit High School is a guy that you don't really know about. I do. I saw him in spring. He only played one year. He backed up a D1 quarterback for three years. Jack LaRivier from Jesuit High School, 6'3", 210, 215, you know, 220 in that range, can run a 4'6". Great arm. Man, he looks like a Terry Bradshaw. He looks like a big, strong quarterback you see in the NFL. And he can run. Like, he can run, and he's only played a year. And he's gotten a preferred walk on the two lane, but no D1 offers. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Everybody's looking for a 6'3", 220 guy that can run. That's tough, right? With an arm and can run. Remember Joe Burrow? Could run, could throw, could do all that. And you can hit this guy, and you can't hurt him. He's bigger than a linebacker. But Jack is an incredible player. He's on the cover of a magazine. He's not ranked. Who cares? He's D1. Our next quarterback is Landry Liddy, the guy everybody knows about from Calvary Baptist. They won a state title in 220. They were close to getting to one in 221. He is a special player. He's six foot tall. Don't, don't get caught up in the height. He's like a Drew Brees. He's different. He's got a cannon arm. He's smart. He dissects defenses. He threw for almost 12,000 yards and over 100 touchdowns at Calvary Baptist. Led his team to a state title in 220. He's going to Louisiana Tech. He reminds me of Tim Rite, who was from Utah, believe it or not. Played in the NFL. Now he's a coach, a college coach. This kid's going to be a great quarterback in college. I think he'll start three years. You know, quarterbacks sometimes have to redshirt. But if, if needed, he could start right away. I think he's got NFL talent. The next quarterback is Zeon Chris from Madison Prep in Baton Rouge. He led his team to a state championship and they won it in 220, the first ever out of Baton Rouge. And guess where he's going? ULL of Lafayette, UL, the Raging Cajuns, got him a steal. He's better than the quarterback signed at Florida by the old coach at UL that's at Florida, Billy Napier. But Zeon Chris is a guy that's going to take over for Levi Lewis as a freshman and be phenomenal. He can run. He can throw it. He is super advanced. Watch his film. Watch a whole game. He's super advanced on everything with the game. Zeon Chris, the next guy, the top quarterback in the state, one of the top players in the country, Walker Howard, is going to LSU. His dad, Jamie Howard, was on the first cover of my magazine in 92. That's how long I've been in this. His dad was on the cover. I'm getting very old. Walker Howard is better than his dad. His dad was an all-SEC quarterback at LSU and had a lot of talent at the wrong time. If he would have had Saban or he would have had some of these other coaches, he would have flourished a little more. But Walker has got incredible talent, and he's, he's another level guy who's got a chance to be a first-round pick one day. 
in the NFL draft as a top 10 pick. That's good news for LSU. And they got these O linemen I mentioned earlier. That's going to do it for all our guys. In the next segment, we're going to announce our player of the year. And I'll give you a hint. It's not a skill player. You would think it would be a skill player, but he's a lineman. And we're going to tell you who he is when we come back. Grosavon Lodge, the true sportsman's paradise. Grosavon Lodge has fresh and saltwater fishing, alligator hunting, waterfowl hunting, and echo tours. Located south of Lake Charles, Louisiana, give them a call at 337-598-2357. That number to call again is 337-598-2357 and have the time of your life. Gage has served Louisiana for over 40 years. Let Gage create a custom-tailored solution for your business and become your partner in technology. Give them a call today at 225-753-4243 and help your business get better connected with Gage. Welcome back. Hope you're enjoying the show. It's our last segment. It's our player of the year. We're going to film on him. A lot of these kids you saw film on. We at least had pictures of most of the kids today with their bio up on the screen. Hope you enjoyed that. Before I mention who the player of the year is, I'm going to tell you how I made the pick. I looked at every kid in this class that I mentioned today. I look at who is the most advanced, who is the best player in the state at their position. Then I look at who is the best player outside of the best player at their position. And then I look at who is the most gifted, who's the most advanced, who is going to be the highest NFL draft pick, born an injury. Who's that once-in-a-lifetime generational guy in this class? Because I've seen 31 of these classes in Louisiana. It, it was one guy. It was one guy only. Offensive lineman, Will Campbell, Neville. Will can come in and change the whole team at LSU because you need linemen, like Peyton Park Smith coming on today. You need those guys. Without the big linemen, without the gifted ones, and there's not many of them, they're hard to find. They're hard to find those 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six guys that can move their feet, that are strong, that are advanced, that are mean. Will Campbell will probably be the best player in the country, the best freshman O-lineman in the country next year. When could Louisiana ever say that? Never. Never. Alan Fanica was from Texas that went in the Hall of Fame recently with the Steelers. He played at LSU. Uh, Kevin Mawa was the last Louisiana guy. And you know Kevin Mawa, who's in the Hall of Fame, was not – as this advanced, Alan Fanica, who I saw play, was not as advanced as this guy. That's how I made the pick. And there's others that are going to be in the NFL. I mentioned several of these kids are going to be in the NFL one day. If they make it in the NFL, it's going to be up to them. If they're drafted, it's going to be up to them. But Will Campbell is our player of the year. He's the best player, most ready, most gifted, born an injury. First round pick and could be the first pick of a draft. Most people would have said, I would have said Walker Howard, I would have said Aaron Anderson or some of these other guys. And look, they're all great players. And if your kid wouldn't mention today, it's because we didn't mention every D1 player. There's over 75 more D1 players we didn't even mention today. So there's a lot of talent in Louisiana. If you ever hear someone tell you Louisiana's down, shake your head because it's not down. It's not down. There's a lot of talent in this state. I hope you enjoyed the show. Go to our website, LAFootballMagazine.com, and you can even go to the, the backlog from way back. We did an article on Peyton on our website. You can check him out on, with Sterlington High School or any article on any kid in the state. We'll see you on Friday. <laughs> The Sports Scout Report Podcast with Lieber Keen is sponsored by Medine's Collision Center in Baton Rouge. Take control, choose Medine's. Grosavon Lodge, south of Lake Charles, the true sportsman's paradise. Treads and Care Tire Company in Central, the tires you need, the service you want. Harvey Autos in Shreveport, Bossier City, the name you have trusted Four years. Engage in Baton Rouge. Get better connected with Gate.
Thanks for listening to the Sports Scouting Report podcast with Lee Brookings.